With the arrival of both Copilot Actions and Scheduled Prompts, we suddenly have two ways to do something that many users have been requesting for the last year or more, a mechanism to automatically invoke Copilot usage without having to directly enter a prompt. These two technologies, while having overlapping objectives, do have radically different approaches and, at present at least, radically different capabilities. So let's look at both of them, compare, contrast, and consider just whether either of these, or perhaps both, actually scratch the itch many people have had for automating Copilot. But first, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I advise smaller businesses on how to get the best from AI, including Microsoft's AI technologies. Check out the links below if you're interested in learning more about me or my services. Copilot Actions was one of a catalogue of AI announcements at last year's Ignite conference, at which point it was in private preview. Recently it was announced that this will be rolling out to targeted release users, and we can expect it to be coming to all Microsoft 365 Copilot users in the course of time. When Actions arrives, it adds a new pinned option to the left menu in the Microsoft 365 Copilot app, aka office.com, aka the Microsoft 365 portal, and selecting this option takes you to a creation page for Copilot Actions. If you look at the Discover screen, you can see the actions are broken down into three categories, Catch Up, Gather and Prepare. Catch Up is broadly for keeping up to speed on communications or meetings, allowing you mostly to scope by source or topic. Gather is all about collecting information, whether that be monthly newsletter updates or survey responses. And Prepare is about getting ready for what's coming up. If we take a look at setting a couple of these up, let's start with summarise communications and highlight action items, you get a few options here. The mode of communication, emails or team messages, the person or people to include, the period of time over which to look, and how you'd like to be notified in Teams, email or a Word document. You can also select how often this action repeats, daily or weekly. And once you've selected Preview, you can see the specification of your action, built kind of like a Power Automate flow, but the only thing you can change here is the frequency. While that's creating, we'll look at another. The Gather Newsletter Updates allows you to select a person or group of people. Bear in mind that these do need to be internal users, so if you collaborate with external people a lot, as seems to be the case with every new Microsoft tool, you're currently out of luck. You specify what you want to collect and a deadline and you click Preview. Again, you're shown a specification of your action, but this time you can customise the message. Note that right now at least this message has no copilot assistance, so I can't for example reference a meeting where what each person should write for the newsletter was discussed and have copilot customise the request based on this. It's just static text. Once you're ready you can click create. So now let's jump into Teams and take a look at what the output of this experience looks like. In my chat with the Workflows agent, you can see the two actions I just worked on. First, I have the output of my update request. This is actually a link to a loop page, and I click on it to view the content. This is a little bit of an odd experience, as it's possible to view loop content directly in Teams. And if you choose the email output, it does indeed show you the loop content in line. And then you can see the request to Adele related to the gathering action. If we move over to Adele's Teams, you can see the request. You fill out this adaptive card, submit it, and then the action is shown as completed over in your Teams. I have to say though, in my opinion, this is kind of an odd experience. The rationale given by Microsoft of why this request comes from the user who's initiating the gather action, rather than the workflows bot, is so you can know where the request comes from. But that's out of keeping with the philosophy used in other similar apps like approvals. This means if you have an active Teams chat, the gather request clogs that up. It opens the potential for the requestee to just reply in the chat rather than the adaptive card, meaning the content won't actually be gathered. And the adaptive card itself is pretty inflexible as it just accepts plain text, no rich formatting or document inclusion. And the idea that this actions feature will proactively chase down your content also seems wrong too. I haven't tested this extensively, but I've allowed requests to expire without any nagging from Copilot at all. 
So for many of you, the question is probably what is actually happening when you're creating or running a Copilot action? We're used to automation templates like this, where the end result is a Power Automate flow. And you can just go in and update and refine as much as you need to get exactly what you want. Alas, while I'd love to show you how it's working, I can't. When you first create an action, a new Power Platform environment is provisioned in your tenant, which by default none of your users have access to. There are no flows connected to these actions, nothing to update or customise. The depth of what you can manipulate as a user is exactly what you see on screen. So if you don't like the exact customization options available for a particular template, right now the answer is to wait for Microsoft to add some more templates. The utility of Copilot Actions is clear, and if the template options continue to grow, this will be a great starting point for simply automating tasks where a little bit of Copilot Smarts is beneficial. However, this will probably not be the go-to for those with big automation ideas for Copilot, and this is certainly not a solution that in its current build fits well into Microsoft's existing automation ecosystem. However, if having tight control over the prompt Copilot is running is important to your automation needs, then you'll want to keep watching to learn about scheduled prompts. If you're finding this video useful, it would be great if you'd hit the like button and leave a comment to help you get in front of more interested people. Also, if you'd like to see more like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Schedule prompts is a feature that's in preview. To get it, you have to request entry into the preview. This is done on a tenant-wide basis, and so needs a support request from the Microsoft 365 admin portal. You can find out more at one of the links I'll put below. Once you've got schedule prompts enabled, you'll get a slight UI tweak in Copilot Chat to enable you to use it. You can run any prompt, and then under the prompt or under the response, you can see options for scheduling it. You just click on this option, a schedule screen appears, and from here you can't change the prompt, but you can set a schedule for it. When you create the scheduled prompt, you can't really do anything from the management screen other than send it to trash, but there is a rather alluring icon here too, a link to Power Automate. We'll come back to that later. If we jump back into the chat interface at a later time, you can see my scheduled prompt has run and a new interaction from that chat is available, denoted by the bold heading and the clock icon. Note that you don't receive a notification. This is just a bolded heading in chat. And that's really all there is to scheduled prompts. For tasks like those catch up or prepare actions in Copilot Actions, you could definitely use this instead though you wouldn't get the alert or the content sent straight to you. But hang on a minute, we need to return to that issue of Power Automate. And jumping into the Maker portal, this is more like it. Power Automate is the home of automation for Microsoft 365, so why should Copilot's automation tools live anywhere else? Each scheduled prompt creates a recurring cloud flow and utilizes a hidden connector called the BizChat connector to push a prompt to Copilot. The action contains some fields that set up where the chat appears, a thread ID, just as we might see in Copilot Studio, along with an array of options that clearly are different Copilot skills or tools available to it. The message itself contains the prompt, but if you select specific grounding content in that prompt, this is represented here too. Such as in this different example, where a message annotation is included, this is a reference to a meeting that includes an ID that's the same as you could use um, in the Outlook connector and the Get Event action. Can you customise these flows like you would any other? Yes, we can switch out triggers or add conditions that determine whether the flow runs. However, we are limited to working in the context of the existing Copilot thread, from what I can tell. However, on the output side, once you run the flow, your options are very limited. You don't get any data back from Copilot, so you don't know what the response was. You just know it ran. This means it's impossible to use this capability to build the equivalent of a customizable Copilot action, as you cannot get the output to take it outside of that Copilot chat interface. For me, having Copilot chat become just another inbox is a deal breaker. Conceptually, the schedule prompts are great. The customization possibilities are fantastic, but Copilot Chat is just not a strong interface for asynchronous interaction right now. And frankly, we don't need yet another one. 
But perhaps there's a good reason why neither of these tools offer a complete customizable solution to Copilot automation. From asking if Microsoft 365 Copilot is the right product for your business, to working out how agentic AI can amplify the ways you delight your customers, there are lots of questions swirling around AI strategy and AI adoption for all businesses right now. If you need a strategic advisor, technical expert, or a personal or team AI coach to start or support your journey, I offer services to help you. I work with small and medium-sized organizations that are looking to maximize the benefits of AI in a safe and responsible way. And I'd be happy to connect with you to understand your situation and outline how I can assist you to succeed with this technology. Take a look at the links down below to find out more and to get in touch. Both Copilot Actions and Schedule Prompts give you the basic capability to automate working with Copilot. Actions offers an end-to-end -end solution that is strictly limited by the types of automation templates that have been made available. Schedule Prompts, on the other hand, allows you to automate literally anything, but solely in the context of the baseline capabilities of sending a prompt to Copilot chat. Each of these approaches is useful, and particularly to simple but routine automation across a number of contexts. But given the power of Microsoft's automation tooling, the inflexibility of both the solutions is somewhat perplexing. Though with the caveat that both of these are early products and often pre-generally released products change radically. Look at Copilot extensibility morphing toward agents last year if you need evidence of that. Schedule Prompts offers a better picture of how users tend to use Copilot. You could take your prompt that does what you want it to do and repeat it predictably. In contrast, I have no idea what an action like help me prepare for my day is actually running as a prompt, and I've absolutely no way to personalize this. But while in scheduled prompts I have more options to customize how Copilot is used, I have no way to break out of Copilot chat like I do with actions, which gives me the flexibility of where I want to see the results of my automated AI use. This reminds me very much of when Microsoft introduced simple rules-based automation into Loop and did so leveraging Power Automate, but in a way that was completely out of keeping with how Power Automate works with most of their other apps. I made a video about that and I'll link it below. And here we seem to have the same issue twice over with two versions of Copilot-based process automation that are difficult to see as a good fit for the way automation generally works across Microsoft 365. However, whereas the loop issue was one that I think was born from questionable design, I question whether these issues with Copilot automation are more purposeful. Microsoft probably doesn't want us using Copilot for automation. It wants us using Copilot Studio or AI Builder or even Azure AI Foundry services, all of which, if driven in an automated or autonomous way, generate additional billing, even for Microsoft 365 Copilot licensed users. If this is the case though, I think Microsoft may have misread the room on why there is a desire for this type of feature. Dropping a prompt directly to Copilot currently gives capabilities around tenant-based grounding that are either totally impossible or at least extremely difficult to achieve given other automated or autonomous AI options out there. I cannot, for example, simply ask Copilot Studio to compare an input to my recent emails on the same topic. In my view, the most important place Microsoft differentiates itself in the ongoing AI arms race is in this business context grounding and connected orchestration, and it is here where it has offered very few options for more standalone AI use cases. Microsoft needs to find a way to leverage this differentiator while protecting its revenue model. And while preview features aren't the best way to understand long-term intent, these two options, as they stand, raise concerns in my mind that an AI opportunity that could be completely unique to Microsoft is being left on the table. Within the scope of their fairly limited flexibility, I can see cases where I would use both scheduled prompts and Copilot actions, or advise clients of this as a solution to their needs. However, there are far more scenarios for that Copilot-based automation itch than these two options can currently scratch, so I'll be waiting to see what comes next. What do you think? Have you tried out these automation tools? Do they meet your needs, or what else would you like to see? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.